add this thing on. Okay, so here's our graph. Same graph we had before. Here's a point where g of x is zero. That's our zero of g of x. That's where the function is not defined, right? Yep. If x is right here, then the value of g of x is this, right? And the value of f of x is this. What do you get if you divide this by this? Well, it takes one, two, three, four, five of these to make this. Maybe six, but we'll just say five. I think six is good. We don't care <laughs> that much. You know, because once we have our functions and our numbers, we'll be able to figure it out. We're just estimating, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't care if it's five or six or seven, okay? It's somewhere around there. It's not much different than five. So we're going to say that h of x, and let's put the h of x graph in orange, has value. Five. Because this goes into this five times, okay? Then we cut this in half, so we're at this point. What happens it's small. to the value of h of x? Well, this value gets smaller, so it goes into this more times, right? If this point is twice as close as this, because this is a straight line, this point being twice as close to this means that this value will go in twice as many times as this value does, right? At least twice as many times. So we'll just say, okay, twice as many. So that makes the value of h of x 10. So I mean, that this plausibly goes into this 10 times, doesn't it? Take one, two, three, four, five, ten of them. Okay? So we get a value 10, which is twice as far from the origin as the value 5. So there's 10, and our value of h of x will have to be 10. Now what happens if we go twice as close as that? What's going to happen to h of x? Yeah, we go twice as close. I can still draw that one. After this, I won't be able to really draw because the chalk's too wide. So here's another h value, right? Uh, 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 another x value. Okay? And that's going to give us an even smaller value of g, right? And it's going to be twice as small if this point's twice as close to this zero. So that's going to give us 20. So we have now 20, which is, as you probably know, twice as big as 10. Okay? So here we have 20. And if we project from this point up, and then over, coincidentally the point's on the graph of one of the straight lines, but that isn't, doesn't mean anything. Because where I put the 5 was just a random point. Okay, well, what we have is a bunch of x values that keep getting twice as close to the 0 of the g of x, the point where we're undefined, right? So let me see if I can slip A vertical line in here, right? Okay. We can keep getting closer to this line. I can't draw it, but we can keep getting closer, right? That makes sense? Yeah. Well, every time we get twice as close, we've got to go twice as high. Okay? So if we go another step, I can't draw it because the chalk is too wide. If I went another point closer, I'd be all the way up to value 40. Well, there's 20, so there's 40. And I'd have a point that's getting really close to this green line. But I'd have a point on the graph here, wouldn't I? Okay. 
Does that make sense? Hello? Hmm? It does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, say, say it doesn't if it doesn't. Well, what's it going to look like if I connect these points? Curve. It's going to look like this, right? Near this zero of g of x, this is what we call an asymptote. We could keep getting twice as close and going twice as high. Okay? If we do it ten more times, we'll be getting up to about a kilometer. Okay? Do it ten more times, we'll have a thousand kilometers. And that's getting to the point where I can hardly reach it. Yeah. Okay? Sure. <laughs> Even in my feeble imagination. Okay, so, we get the idea? Now, on the negative side, same thing happens. Our values of f of x still are not going to change much, right? f of x is a little bigger than it was here, but percent y is only a couple of percent, or maybe 10 percent bigger. But what's going to happen to the values that we get here? Our g of x values are not going to be negative, right? They're going to be the same size these were if we go to the same distances, but they're going to be negative. What's that going to do? Well, that's going to give us points like Okay. If this distance goes into this one, two, three, four, five times, we're going to get a negative five here, right? So we would have from this point, we come down to here, cross the negative five, that would give us a point here. We go twice as close, and we get negative ten or at least negative 10. The points will actually be a little bit higher than I've drawn them because the f values keep getting bigger, right? Now over here the f values keep getting smaller so everything's not totally symmetric, but we still get the idea that we're going to get something around negative 10. So what we're drawing isn't an exact graph, but it's pretty close. And then we're going to get negative 20 and then I'm down into the label of my function, but it's going to look very much like this. Okay? So that's what happens when we get close to a zero of a denominator. We get asymptotes. And that's why. And we can understand that just by looking at the graph. How many times does this go into this? How many times does this smaller thing go into this thing that's about the same? Okay? We have to have that picture. We have to understand that that's what division means. Now, you were taught that that's what division means, most likely, when you were 8 to 10 years old. And then pretty soon, you started doing stuff on paper with it and forgot what division means. You just did it. Okay? One of the flaws in our curriculum is that you learn these really important things and then you never use them again, True. so you get to forget them. And then you get here and you don't understand the formation of an asymptote mm -hmm. and you have a hard time understanding it, but, okay, you might have a hard time understanding it, but keep thinking about it until you do. You can still do that and you can still recover what you knew about division before you knew how to do it on paper or punch buttons on a calculator, right? Go to any elementary school text. Well, I won't say any because I don't really know, but most of them say you got this many duckies and you got this many duckies or whatever. Uh, okay? They give you pictures, they give you pictorial representation of what addition and subtraction mean, and you kind of retain that because it's a little less complicated. But they also told you what division is. And then real quick they told you to forget it, let's just do this. They didn't tell you to forget it, but they allowed you to forget it. Okay, and not your teachers, it's the curriculum. The curriculum is very complicated. Okay, designing curriculum is a complicated thing. If I did it, it would be even worse than it is. But 
you know, if everybody just listened to me, they'd make little changes and kind of incorporate these things so that pre-calculus students would be able to understand this more easily. Because many people have gone to the pre-calculus and beyond, right? And our smartest people, and you're among them, I mean, you know, I'm not top echelon, none of us are among that, uh, I don't think. Uh, but, you know, people who should be able to understand this are coming out handicapped in their ability to understand it, okay? Well, you can overcome it. You're still able to recover this. So I'm just advocating that you do so.